I'm here to make your life so much easier. This is how you take the stress out of entertaining. Shabbos in one hour. I'm talking about a starter, a main, a side, and a dessert in 60 minutes or less. Step one, chicken in a really well-oiled pan. We're gonna put this skin side down to get that really nice sear. So that's why you have to be sure that you've well-oiled your pan with some good quality EVOO. And salt and pepper the other side, right? We want equal even seasoning. Make sure your oven is preheated. This is going in at 375 for 20 minutes. While this is in, we're gonna get started on our stewy chickpeas, tomatoes, and kale. We're gonna start with our can of whole tomatoes just crushed with your hands. We're adding here chickpeas, pitted and chopped Kalamata olives. We'll add a lot of briny saltiness to this dish. Another great pop of flavor is capers. Anytime you just want that little bursting jewel of saltiness, that's what you get from the capers. I adore them. Minced garlic, if you wanna save time, you can also use the frozen crushed garlic. And both because they're milder in flavor and because they're beautiful, some sliced red onion. The braising liquid here is going to be some chicken broth and some fabulous kale going right in full of iron and vitamins because we care about how quick it is to make but also how good it is for you and your family. So we just wanna give this a really great mix so that it's ready to go because in about 20 minutes, we're gonna pull the chicken out of the oven, flip it, pour this on top, and braise it to finish it off. Next, we've got our couscous. One of the best tips that I can give you for couscous is massage it. So a little drizzle of a great quality EVOO. When we gently massage the EVOO into the grains, what we're doing is we're separating the couscous. So just 30 seconds or less to give that couscous just a little bit of love. Then what we're gonna do is take boiling water, pour it over the couscous just to cover, put a plate so that it cooks nicely and will absorb all of that water and be nice and fluffy. Then we say, see you later, alligator. So this is my Israeli carrot salad, courtesy of my true blue Israeli sister-in-law, Khani. So we're just gonna do a quick coarse chop on the parsley. Just need like about a tablespoon or more. Sometimes I just love a little extra fresh herbs in here and goes right into the bowl. We've got a bowl of shredded carrots off here to the side, juice of one lemon. You wanna just release the juice of the lemon by putting your body weight on it and rolling. Slice it in half. Lemon skin's gotta be washed really, really well. And then the best way to make sure that you don't get any seeds in your Israeli carrot salad is squeeze the lemon either this way and catch the seeds or squeeze it this way. And this way, if you wash your lemon skins really well, the seeds stay in the lemon and just the juice comes out. So that's great. Next we have in here some garlic, two cloves of minced garlic, some schug. This is nice and spicy and fabulous. If you don't like spice, you can use a little less. You can use some cayenne pepper if you want or some red pepper flakes if you don't have schug. Put that in there, a little salt, a little pepper. Super easy, just a few ingredients. We're missing our great quality EVOO, about three tablespoons. We just give this a good toss and let it just sit. It can sit, you can serve it immediately or you can serve it a day or two later. I even love making extra and then having leftovers for during the week. And just now, perfect timing, my chicken's ready to come out of the oven, we're gonna flip it. Let's bring it skin side up. We got some great little caramelization going. That brown skin is that yummy, yummy bite that we love. We wanna put our stewy chickpea tomato kale mixture all around the chicken. And we'll finish braising this. This is one of those hearty, fresh, fabulous, full of nutrients, full of flavor, one pan dinners. Okay, we're gonna bring this back into the oven. Again, at 375, no need to change the temp, another 20 to 30 minutes till it's done. Dessert, the absolute best part, we're making a chocolate rose malabi, which is a classic Middle Eastern pudding dessert similar to a panna cotta. We're of course going to make it parv, so we're starting with three and a half cups of almond milk. The sweetness for this malabi is coming from Ceylon, AKA date honey. And the chocolate comes from a really great cocoa powder. And we just need to whisk this up. The cool thing about this pudding is that it's made and set up in the microwave and then in the fridge. Okay, so we're just whisking in all the cocoa powder so there are no lumps left. And um, we're gonna prep our thickening mixture while we're here, before we head over to the microwave, which is just another half cup of almond milk plus a half cup of cornstarch. Same whisk, just mix together. This is what's gonna give us that pudding-like consistency. Now we wanna take this over to the microwave. 
We're gonna place this bowl with the almond milk, the date honey, and the cocoa powder into the microwave for two minutes. Pull it out and whisk in the remaining half cup of almond milk and cornstarch. This is your thickener, it's what's going to give it that pudding-like consistency. Now place that back into the microwave for four to six minutes, stopping and whisking every two minutes until you start to see it develop that pudding-like consistency. Hot, 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 hot. All right, be careful when you're bringing uh, your bowl to the countertop. This is rose water. One tablespoon goes a long way. That's gonna give it that classic Middle Eastern flavor. It's really floral, it's really aromatic, and we're adding it now because we want that flavor to be really prominent and just grab you when you taste this. I've got a great pudding-like consistency. All it needs to do is cool and set up in the fridge. I'm gonna put it now in beautiful custard cups, dessert cups. This way it's all ready to serve. We started with an Israeli carrot salad. We're ending with a cocoa rose malabi. And then you're really taking your diners on this exotic journey in under an hour. Now we're ready to plate everything up. So we've still got our couscous, which we had set aside. I'm gonna plate this. Get some really nice looking parsley on here. And that's great. You can even give it a little, nice little drizzle of EVOO before it goes out and hits the table. I like to make little lemon twists. So I just took a sliced lemon and I cut it just halfway. And that's good. And we gotta get our dessert. I literally did this in real time. They've just been chilling in the fridge just for a minute. Now the cool thing is to garnish them. I could do sliced pistachios, sliced berries, nuts, shaved chocolate. Toasted coconut would be really, really fabulous with this. Some berries and banana. I'll put one here so you can even see better. This is your Shabbos in an hour, starting with an Israeli carrot salad. You can serve that with hummus, tahina, or on the side of gefilte fish. For the main, you've got your fabulous, fluffy, non-clumpy couscous. Beautiful braised chicken on top of stewy chickpeas, kale, and tomatoes. Finishing off with a cocoa rose malabi. If you want to be the first to see more of my one-hour Shabbos menus, you have to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Great Shabbos. A main, a side, and a an dessert. Mm. <laughs> okay, go. I'm ready. Ready in three, two. And we just need to whisk this up. This is amazing. This is the piece de resort. Blah, 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 blah. Exotic. Um, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to walk. Blah, blah. And here you have whew, slippery banana. I'm sure this person will really appreciate that my fingers have been all over their banana. I can't even get it up. <laughs> Hold on.